Hey everybody, this is Perch. What's going on with Comixology? Well, a bunch of people sent me uh, this this note or these these uh, screenshots of Amazon's changes to Comixology, which seem to be confusing everyone, uh, from fans to Jamie McKelvey to everyone. So, what what's going on exactly? Well, here here are as they say the facts, ma'am. So, um, Amazon. It, well, first of all, Amazon owns Comixology. Okay, so so there's that. And then Amazon announced about a year ago, maybe less. I, it's hard to tell. Time flies. But I remember I did a video about it, talking about uh, how Amazon was going to uh, bring the Comixology storefront into Amazon, and it wasn't going to operate as an independent entity as much, and it was going to start to consolidate, and, and that was what was happening. And I said in that video at the time that this was likely going to alter kind of how payment works. It was likely going to alter some subscription things. And, uh, and it was also inevitable when a big company like Amazon buys another company like Comixology and consumes it, um, consume is the right word. And Comixology has operated a little bit like its own little uh, splinter within Amazon for a while, and it, it always made sense that they'd pull it in. I remember some people really arguing about me, saying that would never happen because Amazon is a multi-billion dollar business and comic books are a joke, and you know why would they even bother with pulling in comic books because it makes so little money, and it's, again, that's the wrong way to think about it. Amazon sells, you know, everything. They sell books. They sell batteries. They sell toilet paper. Make your own joke about the toilet paper. They, so, of course, they're going to pull in the comics. Of course. Anyway, so what 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 was this new announcement? So, basically, in a uh, frequently asked questions kind of way, they said, what will happen to my series subscription? So, people who are subscribed to things through Comixology. It says, uh, series subscriptions will only be available on Amazon.com. Please see FAQ number two below and what steps you need to take to make sure all your series subscriptions move over to Amazon. Unfortunately, series subscriptions for customers outside of the U.S. will not be available. As a result, active subscriptions will automatically be turned off once the shipping experience moves from Comixology to Amazon. Okay, so first of all, what does that mean? Well... It means that uh, there, there's a manual process, which we're going to talk to in a minute, to handle your subscriptions. They're not going to migrate automatically. Is this good? No. No, this is super bad. Whenever you have a subscription, part of the value, that's why a lot of people value what they call software as a service or SaaS, is because people will subscribe to something and then they'll probably kind of forget that they've subscribed to something and they'll keep paying for years before they realize that there's like a little hole in their wallet and then they'll uh, they'll go oh crap I need to get in there and and figure that out. That's why you have all these uh, sites and services right now that will basically go and look at all the streaming services that you're currently subscribed to and unplug you from them because there's people who have uh, happily signed up to HBO Max and Hulu and Peacock and Paramount and Netflix and Disney Plus and Apple TV and God knows what else, and they're paying more money than they used to pay, you know, at the cable company. And that was the whole point was like, I'm cutting the cord so I can pay more money and lots of little pieces everywhere. That's how it goes. It's been a very profitable part of Apple's business model because you could just like one click and then uh, put it on your iTunes account and they just suck money out of your wallet every month. But anyway, that's 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 what the the goal is. So if you come in and you say, hey. We're going to shut off your subscription unless you uh, get in here and do some manual work and move it over and add some more fields and everything else. That's called big, uh, you know, it's an unplug moment that you're forcing on people. So what happens is people, uh, people go, well, now's a great opportunity to stop subscribing because I, I just don't have, if I don't do anything, that hole in my wallet will get plugged up. That's, that's, it's basically what's going on. So, uh, this freaks out companies for sure. It's definitely freaking out the publishers who say, well, God damn it. Now we have to go in here and tell every single person who's reading a comic. And by the way, you know, we don't even know because we don't see the personal data of who's subscribed to what. So we have to send out this blanket announcement to everyone saying, Hey, make sure if you happen to be subscribed to Amazon, uh, to comiXology, make sure you move over your, your comics. Cause otherwise you'll stop getting your comics. And they don't want to send that message. They don't want to send that email because if they do, what they know is they're basically alerting all those people. It's like, hey, you should go and see what you're subscribed to. You might have forgotten, especially in a world of digital, which is a lot of which is comicsology. So again, with digital stuff, just piles up. You forget about it. How many times have you ordered something, 
You're subscribed to it. You go on about your life. I don't know. Things get busy. You forget. Six months later, you, you wander back to this. You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. I have this service. And you look in there. There's like 100 comics in there. You're like, holy crap. How'd this happen? It happened because they were quietly sucking money out of your wallet the whole time. So nobody wants to disrupt that chain. But Amazon is disrupting that chain. And Marvel and DC are sitting here going, well, I, should we, should we, you know, we want, we want people to be aware that they need to move things over because we don't want them turned off by accident. But if we send a mail out, a lot of people are going to go look at what they're subscribed to and probably unsubscribe to some stuff because, you know, they, they're, they don't want to be, a, they don't want to have 10 X books, you know, and so anyway, that's what's going on. So <laughs> not a, not a great situation, but it goes on. Oh, and, and so, sorry, the other thing that's tucked in there is uh, if you don't live in the U.S., uh, you know, GFY. <laughs> so, okay, that's not good. What's going to happen to my pre-ordered comics? Okay, here's the next step. If you pre-ordered a book on Comixology, right, a lot of comic books get announced and you, you pre-order, and this is another good thing for the publishers. They like it because, you, you know, they basically get to do their marketing way up front, and then you pre-order it, and then they promptly forget about it. And uh, then you promptly forget about it, but you pre-ordered it, so your money's coming out anyway. If you pre-ordered a book on Comixology with a release date of no later than February 16th, no later than, okay? So with a release date of not, not later than February 16th, which uh, I don't know when this video will go up, but... It, for me right now, that's uh, that's five days away from when I'm recording this video. So five days from now. We will fulfill that order for you. Okay? If it's within five days, we'll fulfill that order for you. Pre-orders for books with release dates after February 17th. Are you ready? Will be canceled, and you will have to reorder them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, we'll be sending you an email to cancel pre-orders and links to Amazon page. So you can easily reorder your book. So that's nice. Uh, but still it's like asking somebody, Hey, Hey, um, are you sure? I know you pre-ordered this and you gave us your money and, uh, you got all caught up. Marvel did a bunch of marketing, got really excited. Like JJ Abrams and his son on Spider-Man. You're kidding me. I, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. You didn't even have to ask twice. Um, here's my money. And then the comic's going to come out in like four months. Because as you know, when they do announcements and when you do pre-orders, the solicitations are three to four months in advance. So it's not like it's not like one week in advance. It's way in advance. Big titles, especially the stuff you pre-order, gets announced way, way in advance. Typically, people are not pre-ordering, you know, a copy of uh, Spider-Man and, you know, beyond.81.bey tie-in issue. People don't pre-order that stuff. People do not pre-order, uh, you know, DC's romance Valentine's Day special anthology. They don't. They, they pre-order stuff like, you know, Dark Crisis number one, Reckoning War number one. That's the stuff they pre-order. Stuff like that. And so, uh, basically, Marvel does all their marketing, and now we're saying if your comic is coming out later than. Next week, <laughs> we're just going to cancel it. So what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to go, well, you know what? I, I don't know. As time has gone by, I don't, I don't I, As I've learned more, no. Which is not just, this isn't just comics. This is everything. You get hyped up for, for movies or for music. And typically speaking, the biggest excitement you have is at the beginning when you know very little about it. And then as you learn more, it tends to have the effect of dampening the interest. That's just, that's, again, normal consumer behavior, not, not unusual, just how it goes. So Amazon will send out this note. You can reorder everything, but that, that's, that's what's happening in both cases with, uh, you know, with, with Amazon. So what does all this mean? Well, first off, a couple takeaways. It means that the digital strategy in the U S continues to be effed, just terrible. I, I mean, Look, it, digital is the future. I believe that fully. I do think so. I know a lot of you, please don't, you don't need to write the comment if you like to hold the comic in your hand. I, I do too. I'm not, you know, bear, bear real stake about it. But if we're talking about the, the distant future, if clearly we're all going digital. Just like, uh, hey, remember, I, you know, go to your parents 
you know, depending on how old you are. Breen and I are on the same page of this, but uh, the rest of you are probably younger. And uh, we remember that maybe we even said themselves, like, you know what? We're still going to write letters and, and put them in an envelope and mail them. I mean, that's just something, there's something nice about holding a letter in your hand. There's something that is more personal about it than like this newfangled email crap. Like, uh, you know, it's, I still like to hold the paper in my hand. What kind of person's going to go to like something they can't even hold? Like, I mean, some of these, think about the letters that, that people find from their great, 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 great grandparents in the time capsule. I mean, are you, are you going to put like a little USB stick in a time capsule? Yes. Yes, you will actually. But it, like that, nobody will do that. Well, you know, here we are now, 2022, and like, I, I don't know, does, does the post office still exist? I, I'm joking, of course it does, but when was the last time you wrote a letter? I, I'm, I'm sure some of you do, but but it's rare. I'm just saying, it's, it's, the vol- it's un- undeniable, the volume is down. So comic paper comics are not going away today, they're not going away next week, they're not going away in five years, but, they, you know, if we're going 20 to 30 years out, yeah, digital is going to eventually take us. It is. And, and arguably, it kind of already is because the interest and the activity on Webtoon is kicking the ass of printed publishers, Marvel and DC. So this argument of like, ah, digital, digital will never take on. Guess what? Ari has. It has and it's beat it. That's what's happened. That's a sad thought. Anyway, um, that's, <laughs> that's what's happening. Uh, but the digital strategy, one reason why it's not happening quickly, and so good news for people who like printed comics, again, including myself, is that the companies running this stuff, including companies like Amazon, which in theory are you know big, giant, smart tech companies who know what they're doing, uh, they, are, they are just screwing it up <laughs> royally, constantly. And there is no coherent digital strategy for comics in the U.S., period. Sorry, you know what? I'm wrong. There is one coherent digital strategy for comics in the U.S., outside of webtoons and all that stuff, actual comics. And that is piracy. <laughs> piracy, on the other hand, has a completely coherent digital strategy that is executing and is working. And, uh, it, and uh, I, I, sad to say, I, I, I've said this before, please don't misunderstand me. Theft is wrong. Piracy is wrong. You're stealing something. Absolutely. However, if you want to get rid of piracy, if you truly want to you know, in that process, then here's what you're going to need to do. You're going to need to make your digital strategy not stupid. Or as somebody got real angry with me on uh, Twitter the other day, you can't make it retarded. I, I understand that's a, that's a, that's a hate word. I'm sorry. But, you know, in this case, it fits. All right. Maybe we can shift that word away, you know, from uh, you know what, I'm not going to go down this path this morning, but maybe, you know, let's start, stop calling people that word, if, if we're sensitive about it, and start calling actions that word, because this action is retarded. Um, the, <laughs> the digital strategy is terrible, and, and the way people have been trying to compete with piracy has been to tell people, naughty, naughty, this is bad, that you shouldn't do it, it's, you know, you're taking money away from starving artists who are on Twitter right now. You shouldn't do that. And, and look, I'm sympathetic. Yeah, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't steal. Agreed. But the user experience, the ability to get comics, the ability to, I mean, Jesus, do you realize that the, a lot of the piracy sites, you can subscribe to them. You can literally subscribe to the comic. They'll send you a notification when the pirated comic is ready for you. This is more than the actual publishers are doing. Uh, whoever's in, whoever works in digital at these companies should be humiliated and ashamed. I'm, so, I'm sorry, you deserve to feel bad because you've got, uh, who knows, just some rando person who's got better features, better functionality, better you know, connection rates with your customers and your products than you do, and you're making the product. When you know, Read Free Comics kicks Amazon's ass in piracy, I mean, not just piracy, sorry, just in, in digital that, that's a, that should be a wake-up call. And so stuff like this with what's going on with Comixology is like, it, it's just, it's one more way to make it harder for people to read comics. It, this will result in attrition. It will result in more people pirating. I've, I've told this story before. I had somebody come into my, my shop. By the way, this has not changed. In fact, it's just gotten easier and better. And it's like, 
hey, I'm reading all the comics. Well, how are you reading them? I ask. I, you know, what, what, how are you saving all this money? And, and the guy had balls to be telling a retailer this. I mean, you know, I, I make, try to make my livelihood, but I want to learn what the problems are because I'm, I'm not a jackass. I want to find out what's, my, what's the threat to my business. And he's like, there's this guy, Nemesis43, and he just takes all the comics, literally all of them in the week, on the day they're released, like New Comic Wednesday, and he just puts them all in one big-ass zip file and, uh, you know, get, puts them up. So if I want to read the comics, I just download one file, one click, everything, on the day of release. Perfect condition comics. Well, I mean digital, but all there. And then, you know, he's like, I, I read all the comics, and then there's like three or four of them that, uh, that catch my interest, and so then I come in and buy them from you. I'm like, well, I... I you know, thanks for giving me your money, but I, I mean, this is not a feel good story for me, but you know, I, I mean, I, but what was striking about that, which he kept going on and on about is it's so easy. It's one click, one click. And I get all the comics I, until you fix that problem. Sorry. Until it's, it's, it's easy like that. Piracy is going to continue. You can't shame people into not pirating. You could try and sick your lawyers and the police on them, but I, I mean, look, in, it's 2022 now. We've been dealing with this for how long? Like since the old uh, Napster Wars? Like it's been 20 plus years and people have not figured it out. Pirate Bay, all those sites still exist. So if we're waiting for the police to somehow get in here and shut this stuff down, I mean, I, I'm not holding my breath. That's, that's, that's my point. If that's your strategy... Good luck, and I won't even go into the irony of a lot of uh, people in the co <laughs> a lot of full time staffers in in uh, say Marvel uh, tweeting about defunding the police and we don't need them <laughs> and then asking for the police to come in and help them with piracy. I mean, ah, Jesus, uh, what a what a world we live in. Anyway, um, make the usability better. So that's what's going on with Amazon Comicsology. This is not good news. This is not helpful for comics. This is not helpful for publishers. Um, if you are currently using that system, you, I guess you better get over there and make sure your subscriptions are all taken care of and stuff's migrated correctly. I didn't go into, if you do have a subscription, um, you know, there's a, there's a decent chance a number of them are going to get turned off, kind of like the pre-orders. So you're going to have to go in there and make sure they all migrate properly and they get over. And keep in mind little things like relaunches or title changes or that kind of stuff are, uh, are you know, examples of things that aren't going to move seamlessly into this new system. So you're going to have to go and do some of that work yourself. So, you know, if you're a Comixology customer, if you're enjoying Scott Snyder's content in there, he's got a bunch of books that he's pushing through. Uh, you probably want to make sure that things are, things are happening the way you want. And if you work at uh, Marvel and DC, for the love of God, will you invest in your digital strategy like every other modern company on the face of the earth and actually have something coherent? Because uh, I, I don't know if you're embarrassed. I'm embarrassed for you that pirate sites kick your ass. And it would be really nice if you got your head in the game. So there you have it. Anyway, like and subscribe, as always. And thank you for listening.